the book of St. Luke, chapter 12, and the book of Revelations, chapter 20. We're going to start in St. Luke, chapter 12, beginning with verse number 1. Read along with me. The Bible says, In the meantime, when there were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people, insomuch that they trod one upon another, he began to say unto his disciples, first of all, Beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light. And that which ye have spoken in the ear in closets shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body. And after that, have no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed, hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Somebody say man. Somebody say man. The book of Revelations chapter 20, two verses, verse number 14 and verse 15. The Bible says, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Somebody say man. I want to read that one more time because I want to make sure that we're clear that this is not what I'm saying this is not something out of my thought process. This is out of the word of God. Somebody say man. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Of fire. You can be seated if you can be. Today, for a little while, I want to preach from the Word of God a message that the Lord has again dealt with me about. And I do not come uh, lightly bearing this message, I do not come uh, without fear. And without trembling, this to bring forth this message. And I want everybody to know that I've prayed very hard. And I've asked the Lord, are you sure that this is the word that you would have me to bring forth? And I am promising you and those that are watching by the way of television that this is absolutely Without doubt, what thus saith the Lord. Somebody say, man. If I had to put a title on the message, I would simply entitle it, Sister Peggy, I would simply entitle it, Hell is Real. Somebody say, man. Hell is Real. Look at somebody and say, it is. Hell is real. Now, I realize that we are living in a day and time where a whole lot of people don't want anything to do with this kind of message. Brother Sean, they don't want nothing to do with a message of such magnitude as what we would deal with today because it is not uh, one of them subject matters that... Uh, will probably make you want to jump and shout and hoop and holler. Somebody say man. 
It's not one of them messages that's going to cause you probably to dig deep into your pockets and give a big offering at the end of the service. And that is what most of them are looking for anyway in the day and time that we're living in. Somebody say man. But it is a message that is needful. And it is a message that needs to be preached now more than ever. Somebody say man. And I would to God that you preachers that are watching would, would uh, uh, get a picture in your mind and get alone with God and let God speak to you about your congregations and those that you will be responsible for to preach to them that there is an eternal literal hell that waits upon all of those that are not ready for the kingdom of God. Somebody say amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. Well, we don't want to preach stuff like that because it'll scare the youth and it'll scare the young folk. And, and most of you, your, your young folk ain't in your sanctuary this morning anyway. You've got them hid away in a room somewhere. Somebody say man. Somebody say praise the Lord. And I would to God that you pastors would gather your little children and your little teenagers and bring them back to the sanctuary where the word of God can be preached. Somebody say hallelujah today because it's not just a message for the old and it's not just a message, Brother Steve, that is for the, the, the middle age, but it is a message for all of mankind. Somebody ought to raise your hands and praise the Lord. For everyone that is of the age of knowing between right and wrong, somebody say amen. And even for those that don't, I'm glad that there were some messages preached about hell when I was a child, when I was a young boy. Somebody say amen. I'm glad somebody preached about hell when my children were young. Glory to God. They may have not been responsible at that time, but thank God they heard it and they, they had it inputted into their lives. Somebody say praise the Lord. Lord. Now I realize without uh, without being uh, 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 wavering I would say uh, 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 without any kind of reservation that most people don't want to hear it and it's something that they've tried to put out of their mind. It's something that they've tried to take and put on the back burner if you will. Somebody say man it's not going to it's not going to be a message that's probably going to fill the pews and fill the, 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 the Sunday school rooms but it is a message of importance that needs to be preached and now more than ever why brother Raven I'll tell you why because most of the generation today don't even believe in a literal hell somebody say amen they don't even believe that there is a place out of the scripture of the word of God that is reserved for Satan and all of those that decided to follow him and not follow Christ. Somebody say amen. They believe, they, they, they've tried to make it a little more acceptable. They've said, well, if someone does go to hell, they'll just go and burn up the body of burn up and that will be the end of it. But that's not true. Somebody say amen. Some have said, well, they'll spend a portion of time there and then they will be able to get out of there or it'll just be over and that's not true neither. Somebody say amen. I don't care what your, what your uh, uh, books, your literature books, the books that you've uh, gathered from your spiritual gurus and what anybody else has ever said about it. The truth of the matter is that Jesus preached more about hell then he did heaven. He said here in the book of St. Luke, he said, I forewarn you. Somebody say amen. I forewarn you that if one, oh glory to God, if one is not ready, there 
is a literal hell that is going to be there for them. Somebody say amen. But you better hear Brother Raven and hear me well. It has escaped our theology. It has escaped away from our pulpits. It has escaped away out of our discussions at home. It has escaped out of the Sunday school rooms. It has escaped out of our Wednesday night prayer meetings. Somebody say amen. But somebody better institute it back and somebody had better start preaching and warning the people that there is a hell. There is a place of torment. There is a place that the worm dieth not that will gnash upon each other with teeth. Somebody say amen. A place of eternal damnation. A place of eternal hell. That may not be sitting well with some, but it's true and it needs to be preached and it's time that we mount the pulpit and declare what thus saith the word of God. If you believe it, clap your hands and give God a praise. Hell. I will tell my children all of age two sitting under the sound of my voice and one has worked the last two days and has to work again tonight but I will forewarn her that she needs to go back in a day or two when this is available and watch it from beginning to end. I will warn my two children that sit underneath the sound of my voice of the importance of watching and listening to this message again and to make sure without a shadow of a doubt that we are not fooled or deceived by this religious realm. You better hear Brother Raven today. I'm talking about a bunch of foolishness of gurus and spiritual advisors that are trying to tell people a different story. Family members that are preaching a different message. Somebody say mad. But the truth of the matter is there is a hell and it's not something that's being prepared. It has already been created. Somebody say amen. It is not a place that shall come but it's already a place that is in existence. Somebody say amen. That's some of you that are watching by the way of television that may be underneath the sound of my voice are saying well, Brother Raven that sounds like gloom and doom to me. I ain't done with the message yet. I ain't over with yet. Somebody say mad. But before we do anything else, we have to lay the foundation. And we have to lay the groundwork. We have to pour the gravel before we ever pour the concrete. Somebody say mad. And the truth of the matter is men and women and boys and girls need to hear one message and one message only. There is a hell and they better they better wake up and smell the roses. They better wake up and smell the truth. There is a literal, eternal, damnable hell. Don't scare us. Don't scare my children. But Halloween's coming and Walmart's full of evil. Walmart's already full of goblins and devils. And ain't nobody telling Walmart not to say nothing. Come on now. Halloween's coming in some of my family that won't darken the door of a church. But want to talk about a God that they love. Halloween's here and you want to declare it's the most favorite time of the year for you. But I've heard the first 10 minutes of this message and have already decided I'm getting ready to turn this off. I don't need this kind of.
other stuff on my mind. Come October the 31st, millions, millions will partake in a satanic, paganist holiday. They will decorate their yards and their homes with all the garb, but let a preacher full of the Holy Ghost stand and preach about hell, and they don't want nothing to do with it. I'm a preaching better than I'm getting amen, but it's the truth. Somebody ought to lift your hands and shout amen. It's the truth. Look at somebody and say, it's the truth. There's three things about hell today that I'm going to deal with. Can I deal with it? Three things about hell that I'm going to deal with today. Uh, the first being hell is inevitable. Somebody say amen. You ain't going to stop it. Your church doctrine, your church denomination, your church organization, your favorite preacher, your spiritual guru, your spiritual leader is not going to stop it. Your thought process ain't going to stop it. Somebody ought to raise your hands and say amen, Brother Raven. Uh, uh, your your, your uh, 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 deep thought thinking and your gathering together with your spiritual brothers and sisters and buddies uh, in a... In a, in a in a, uh, a mindset of some kind of spiritual thing, but it's of the demonic and devilish and satanic version. Somebody say, man, telling you that there is no hell, you ain't going to change it. Somebody say, man, I don't care what books are in every public library in the, in the county of Pike County, Kentucky, or Mingo County, West Virginia. It ain't going to change it. Somebody say, Amen. I don't care what Dr. Phil says, Oprah says, and I really could care less what most of TBN's preachers say. You ain't going to change it. Somebody say amen. Jesus said there is a place that is reserved and it has been created. Somebody say amen. He said you better, you better not want to go there and you better do everything in your power not to go there because not only is it inevitable but it is eternal somebody say that it don't last for a little while and then go away it's not a fire that will burn and then once it's done burning just go away it's not just a puff of smoke after it's an eternal damnable somebody say amen eternal flame that's burning glory to God not only is it burning now but I read to you over in the book of Revelation chapter 20 that not only will it be what it is now but they that are in what they're in now as far as hell there shall come a second death and then that fire shall turn into a liquid fire the lake of fire somebody say amen you better hear brother Raven and you better hear me for sure that you'll feel it the rest of your eternal soul's life somebody say amen it will not end in a hundred years after death. It will not end in 20 years after death. But eternally, that fire will burn. And everything that has been cast into it, there's only one way to be cast into that lake of fire. And that's the, that's names are not in the Lamb's book of life. It's eternal. It's inevitable. And there's no changing that. You can sit in your little pomp and circumstance, little church house, your little church get together with your little singers and your little, your little musicians and your little uh, uh, puppeteer preachers. And preach about your money in your pocket and your prosperity and your and, and your, uh, all the blessings that you have on this earth and escape from ever talking about hell while some of the very people sitting in your congregation will die and split that eternal place wide open. 
There's probably not a doubt in my mind. And I of a preacher hate to say it. But there could be one among us underneath the sound of my voice that will split that eternal torment wide open. And it doesn't matter how we try to paint the picture, Brother Terry. It doesn't matter how we try to camouflage the truth of the matter is, son, hell is real. And it's inevitable. And it's eternal. It is a place of absolute agony and torment for eternity. I can't see that, Brother Raven. I cannot see that. I cannot grasp that. Some of you that are watching, some of you that are listening, you, you can't grasp that and you can't, you, can't, you can't fathom that in your mind that a God that's supposed to love and a God that's supposed to care and a God that's supposed to be all that we preach him to be and see in the word of God would ever create a place and send us to a place of that magnitude. God will never send nobody to hell. Hallelujah. Somebody slip up your hands. But it had to create the place. Well, I don't believe that, Brother Raven. I, I don't believe that you'll have a consequence like that. Well, you know, the, the life is just full of con con uh, consequences. Can, can I preach a few minutes? If there were no consequences upon the face of this earth, everybody would be robbing banks. And everybody would be robbing grocery stores. Everybody would be doing drugs and alcohol. Can I preach a few minutes? It. Everybody be crawling behind the wheel of a car and driving down the road stoned out of their minds. I wish I could get somebody to help me preach. Why, Brother Raven? Why would they all do that if there was the, because there's no consequences? Who, who's going? Uh, th th you've got to have consequences in life to keep people in 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 a in a place. Somebody say, man, a, a place that keeps them on the right path. I wish I could get somebody. I, I, I do not have a problem with taking young folk down to the jail and taking them for a tour. I got no problem with taking some of the young people. I wish somebody would shout amen. I got no problem with taking young folks down to the county morgue and walking them in and letting them see somebody laid upon a slab, an old cold metal table that, that has snorted drugs and drank too much and caused their bodies to die. I wish somebody raise your hands and help me preach. Somebody says that's hard, that's evil. Yeah, but it may keep them in line. It may bring some some reality back to their minds. That's why preachers, pastors, you better start preaching hell to your people. Some people going to church right now, been in church for 20 years and never have heard a message about this eternal, inevitable, damnable place called hell there's consequences with everything ain't nobody ain't nobody making nobody go down and rob a liquor store but there are consequences if they're caught nobody makes nobody take drugs and alcohol Nobody, can I get somebody to help me preach here? Nobody, nobody making two men take an unnatural use for their bodies with one another and cause a disease to come upon their lives. Can I get some help here? That's the kind of world you want to live in. You want to live in a world where there's no consequences. You can do whatever you want, when you want, how you want, where you want. And, just, and, and then live with a good, clear conscience that you know a Jesus that loves you and cares about you. He does love you. And he does care about you. He loved you enough to give you a chance to escape this place that's inevitable and eternal.
Most people have no idea of the consequences, the dangers, the severity. All they think of hell is just a little slang word. That probably have used it a dozen times in an hour and didn't even realize it rolled off the lips of their mouths. I heard a, I heard a preacher one time uh, uh, preach a message and picked up a little kid and told the kid to look into the camera and tell the camera, tell every dope pusher out there to go to hell. Told a little kid to tell every person that would ever try to sell them liquor to just go to hell. And I thought, preacher, somebody ought to take a bar of soap and put it in your mouth. Somebody help me preach here. But that's all it is to them. What you ought to do, I, 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 I can't understand somebody wanting to tell somebody to go to that place. I spent the last 24 years of my life trying to keep people from it. They have no idea it's inevitable. It's sad, buddy. It's sitting around little tables with a joint of marijuana stuck to their mouths thinking that they are really in a, in a state of a spiritual place and you ain't nothing but high. You ain't nothing but stoned. And you're deceived by the devil. I can guarantee you there are going to be a lot of things in hell but there won't, they won't be no joint of marijuana. And you won't be high in hell. <laughs> I wish I could get somebody to help me preach. I dare somebody slip up your hand and say, you won't be high in hell. You won't be drunk in hell. If you got AIDS, you'll have AIDS the rest of eternity. If you got cancer, you'll have a cancer uh, uh, for eternity. But if you think you'll go to hell just be, uh, uh, and be high and be drunk or whatever, you're crazy. You'll have, you'll have every, I'm a preaching, but I'm getting amen. So you'll have every, you'll have everything together in your mind. You won't be in no state of eroticism. You won't be in any kind of state of mind of, of fantasism. You will be sober and you will know that a preacher came by and pointed his finger at you out of love and tried to preach to you about this inevitable, this damnable, eternal place called hell. Whew. While the rest of this religious society just worried about building their temples and their kingdoms and their gymnasiums while they're thinking about their number one records and their number one best selling books and while you're, while you're just planning on your next $25 a ticket concert souls are dying and going into this inevitable place this damnable I wish I could get some help. This eternal lake of fire. While you're sitting around your table with your drugs, your alcohol, your roommate books, your spiritual gurus, and your intellectual, deep, secular, thought processes trying to decipher what you want out of the 
holy scriptures and what you want to throw away. You'll not throw away none of it. And hell is as part of those scriptures as the love of Christ. Somebody raise your hands and praise God. It is inevitable. Say it with me. Say it's inevitable. It's eternal. It's damnable. Somebody say man. That's the place and you're not going to change it. Look at somebody say you'll not change it. Nobody will change it. Find your church if you want to. Find a church that don't preach it if you want to. Find a place that don't think about it don't don't live it don't whatever the case is but there will come a day if you're not saved if you're not ready to go i wish i could get somebody to help me preach if you're not ready to go you're about to see point number two and point number two is this hell will be full of rabbis it'll be full of preachers it'll be full of priests can i get somebody to help me preach here hell will be full of sunday school teachers and deacons and board members. Can I, can, can, can I get somebody to help me? Hell will be full of gospel singers and worship leaders. It, it'll be full of that. Ah, glory to God. It is going to be full of all of those. I don't care what they portrayed on the outside. I don't care what they, uh, what kind of movie uh, they portrayed on the outside or in front of the public. God knows that their hearts. Somebody say amen. And I will tell you this. Can I preach a few minutes? I will tell you this. That every individual will not be fooled on that day. They will not think they're headed to heaven and then be headed. Every man, woman, boy and girl will know their own heart and really does know. Somebody say amen. If I didn't know that I was headed for heaven today, I'd find me an altar before I'd leave this building. Somebody say amen. If I thought for a minute there was something, I'd call upon the name of Jesus and I'd say get it out of me. Somebody say but I can't get it out of me. The Bible says, he said Jesus said, he said if your arm offends you, cut it off. If your eye offends you, pluck it out. You'd be better off to go through this world without it. to go to hell with it it's going to be full of rabbis going to be going to be full of dignitaries in the religious realm who feel as though they have the interpretations of the scriptures they know ain't nobody going to help me preach it that's all right they know there's some, there's some folks that are deceived unknowingly, but there are others they know. They know that they're already following after a lie, and they've went forth trying to deceive others. Somebody say praise the Lord. You sit at your house with your little your little computers and your little cup of coffee and your little daytime television show on and you won't tell your family the truth and you won't tell your friends the truth and you won't tell I'm telling you I don't care I don't care what kind of title they got in the church if you know and you won't tell them they'll split hell wide open if they don't change and somewhere along the way their blood will be required upon your hands somebody say praise the Lord There's a young man up the road just two days ago, Terry, that 10 months ago I stood in front of his mother's casket. 10 months ago, I said, son, change your life. go on our little old merry ways we want to have our little church picnics and our little Sunday school outings and our little play times and our little jubilees in the park 
And we got people dying and splitting hell wide open. And nobody wants to stand and tell it because you're afraid you'll run somebody off. You better get the one message that needs to be preached. I'm a preaching better than I'm getting amen. I may lose some likes on Facebook for this. You take your like and do whatever you want to with it. If I preach something and you don't like it, as long as I hear him say, well done, I'll be all right. Hell's going to be full of religious people. Not only is hell going to be full of religious people, hell's going to be ref- full of, of dignitaries. Men and women of high esteem. Right now, as you and I speak, there are presidents of the United States burning in hell. Right now, as you and I speak, leaders of communities, states, governments that had, that had the world by the tail, so to speak, are burning in a literal, eternal, damnable hell. Right now, as you and I speak, as I preach this message on Sunday morning, September the 22nd, 2013, as I preach this message right now, there are professional athletes. There are movie stars, rock and roll stars that are burning in a literal, damnable hell. There are religious authors. Religious leaders. Men who have preached more messages than I will ever preach in a lifetime. Literally burning in an eternal lake of fire. Their grandmas and grandpas. Mommies and daddies. Brothers and sisters. Husbands and wives, old and young, that are screaming from the eternal pits of an eternal, literal hell. And you don't want me to preach about it. And you don't want me to say nothing. And you don't want me to tell people Run, run away from sin. You don't want me to tell people that are in churches. What's the difference between people that have been in church for 30 years if they're not living according to the word of God? What good is it? What good is it? Come on, help me preach here, somebody. What good is it? What good is it if if they've talked a good talk and and they've said a a good thing, but but down deep in their hearts, they're not living for Christ. And they've never really been born again and set free by the Spirit of the Lord. Somebody say amen. Somebody say, Brother Raven, that can't happen. Oh, yes, it can. Judas walked with God every day for three and a half years. Tell me it can't happen. Esau had a birthright. Esau had the goods, but sold it for a measly bowl. sit in your
feel a little comfortable looking for a little dance and a shout. And we're living in a world now that a dance and a shout should be the furthest thing from your mind. If I get to shout and dance for a few minutes, I'll treat it like gold. If it's the real shout. Not just your little emotion. I tell you, I don't think you can really shout and dance in the real thing if you're afraid to tell folks about a literal hell. Let's just scare people, brother. It ought to scare you. That you're just trying to fear, uh, uh, cause people to, to fear. Jesus said, don't you fear him who can just kill your body. Amen. Is that what he said? He said, you better fear. I forewarn you, you better fear the one that can kill both your body and your soul. Amen. Good God Almighty, I feel the Holy Ghost from the top of my head. To the soles of my feet. I told you, I told you, Brother Steve, this will probably be the most important message I ever preach. If I, if I never preach another message, you, you, son, you tag it. You tag it and tell that I said this would be the most important message I ever preach. We're now, at the, we're, we're now at the time of the nitty-gritty. You think, they think, ah, hell ain't that, ain't, ain't what you all say it is, you know. Uh, that if there's a hell, it's on this earth, honey. The only, the only thing on this earth that you will admit to is if you go to this literal hell I'm talking about, you will say that was the only heaven I ever knew because there ain't no hell on this earth. I dare somebody help me. I, I, I wonder what them presidents are thinking now. Huh? Oh, when, 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 they, when, when they was at, at, at Washington, when they was at the White House, they had every door open for them. They never co poured their own coffee. They never, they never prepared their own meal. I wish I could get somebody to help me pray. They never cleaned up their own bathroom. Ah, come on, somebody help me pray. The rock and roll stars. I, I wonder what Elvis is thinking now. Uh, come on, help me now. If Elvis didn't find time to call upon the name of Jesus, and I doubt very much that he did, I'm not his judge I'm just telling you my own personal feelings somebody say man but I wonder what he felt like the day that he he left Graceland and fell into hell left in a state that all he had to do is make a phone call downstairs and they'd have prepared him a dinner a snack they would have had his clothes brought to him pressed and cleaned he never had to worry about one dime. He never had to worry about one thing. But when, 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 he, when, when he got up out of that bed and went into that bathroom, and then the last breath left his body, he immediately fell into hell. Wonder what he thinks now. You get mad at me if you want to. It's the truth. Come on, somebody help me preach. Michael Jackson had so much money he didn't know he still he, his estate is worth uh, uh, more he's selling more than Elvis ever thought about selling I saw the statistics the other day more money than yet than, than, than you could ever believe and, and, and had everything that he wanted but it wasn't enough was it he could have had any woman that he ever wanted but a woman wasn't enough for Michael Jackson I'm a preaching and you ain't amen and Michael Jackson could have had could have had a harem of women, but it wasn't enough. Sin entered in. Foolishness entered in. He was brought up under a false doctrine of Jehovah Witness. Huh? Thinking that this earth would be the only only home that he would ever have, and there is no uh, literal hell. No, uh, I, I wonder. I wonder that day when they when they put that needle in his arm and said, "We'll just put you asleep for a little while," but he never woke up.
It's not reserved just for the Marilyn Mansons. It's not reserved just for Adolf Hitler's. It is the home, the eternal solitude for those who have never accepted Christ or have accepted him and walked away. I wish I could get somebody. Somebody slip up your hands, Lord, have mercy, God. Well, not me, Brother Raven. I, not, not me. I'm just a young man, 16, 17-year-old. Hey, I, I, that you couldn't count the multitude of million of 16, 17-year-old boys that are in hell right now. Uh, not me. I'm just a little girl, and I, I'm just a young girl, you know, been raised in church. And, and yeah, I got some thoughts and things, but that's just part of growing up. And that's just part of this and part of life. And that. Not, uh, I, I, you couldn't count the ones that's got that same attitude and that same thought process of little fair-headed, young, 17, 16-year-old girls who never slept with a boy, who never went out on dates, who never drank a beer, who never smoked a drug, but still split hell wide open because when the chance came, they denied it. Ain't nobody wanting to hear Brother Raven preach. I ain't playing today. I told you I didn't come to you lightly today. Uh, we got some visitors here, and they, they might have thought, man, I wish we'd have come last Sunday. I don't know, but I'm telling you right now, all I know is he told me to preach this today. A day and time that I heard, I, I, I had a preacher preach to me and my family about something like this. I walked away thinking, thank you, Jesus. That was the anointed word. I somebody raised me. There's going to be, they're gonna be uh, uh, there's multiplied millions of professional athletes who had it made. You, 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 you hear Brother Raven? I don't care if they cross the plate. Young people, look at Brother Raven. I don't care if they cross the plate. And they... A lot of that's showtime. I don't care if they get down on their knee with their helmet. I'm a preaching. Rap stars. That won their awards and said, I want to thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that are dead now. Huh? I don't care what they say. There's multiplied thousands and millions that said they were saved. That are literally spending an eternity in hell right now. And the church don't want to deal with it. And the church wants to play games. The church, the church is more worried about their fall festival. <laughs> we got the fall festival coming up. Fall festival, fall festival. We got a fall camp meeting coming up. And I'm going to deal with the end times. Ain't going to be no party favorites. Ain't going to be no games. Ain't going to be no uh, dunking for apples. Ain't going to be no pumpkin pie contest. And going to hell. And most of them, while they've heard of it, have never heard a message ever preached under the anointing about what to expect and what's really real. I want you to share this on your Facebook when it comes. In a week when it's on, I want it shared. Son, I want it shared. You might reach one friend. You reach one friend. Not, not your daddy. Not your daddy. Ain't your daddy. 
Every one of you has got Facebook. I'd be ashamed if I wouldn't press share with something like this. I know what some of them will say. I got, fam- I got family. They see this. I, I know what you're going to say. You're going to write your little remark. Bah, 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 bah. You're self-righteous. Uh, you try to scare us in. Yeah, you'll think, if you keep fooling around and you fall into this literal hell that the word of God says is real, you'll remember that I preach to you in just a few minutes your way to escape that place. Preach, Brother Raven. Matter of fact, I think I'll make copies of DVDs and, and, and I want people to take them and, and if, you, if you have to just drop them off at gas station counters, free of charge, take it. Preaching better, I'm getting amen. Somebody said, how, how are you going to grow your church like that? If the word won't grow them, we ain't going to grow them anyway. If I, if I could see one, if I could see one little teenager change their ways by having a literal, eternal hell preached to them. And what I'm preaching while I, while I might have got a little loud and might have got a little boisterous, that's just the way Brother Raven preaches. But it's all out of the Word of God. Amen. You, you can sit in your Sunday service with your croissant and your cappuccino. You can sit in your, 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 you can sit in your uh, little Sunday morning service, you know, the one you get to pick from 9, 10, 11, or 12, you know. You, you pick, your, pick your time and sit down there with your cappuccino and your mush melon. Here's some, here's some religious comedian. I'll spend what time I got left preaching about the reality of the Word of God. Watch. A whole lot of dignitaries, a whole lot of religious folk already burning. I ain't happy about that, so don't write your little notes and say, Brother Raven's happy about people dying and going to hell. I, I, my worst enemy, I wouldn't want to go to hell. I didn't, want a, I didn't want Saddam Hussein to go to hell. I'd, 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 I'd have shouted all over my living room if somebody would have said when they put the rope around Saddam Hussein's neck, if he'd have said, give me, give me just a couple minutes and would have cried out to Jesus. I'd have shouted all over. But when I heard him say, Allah. As soon as the last breath, gone. Watch this. Saddam Hussein had anything he wanted. He lived in a country and ruled and was a dictator of a country that he had everything that he wanted. Some of the people that, sat, that went into his palaces said that it was, it was such a uh, 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 um, made from such uh, expensive stuff. He had everything that he wanted. But then one day they found him in a hole. And the only thing he had was one pistol. And it wasn't enough. You to think while he was in that hole. Somebody said, well, he didn't have the chance to call on Jesus. He didn't know nothing. Ain't a man, woman, boy, or girl that, that dies without having the chance. I don't care if God himself has to step right into their presence and say, I am who I am. <laughs> I am he that is and was and is to come. And here's your chance. If he has to do that. Somebody help me preach here. He had his chance, Steve. 
And all he had to do was cry out. But instead, he looked to Allah. And I don't care, I don't care where you come from. I don't care what province you live in. I don't care what country you are a citizen of. Allah is a false God. There's only one God in his name. is Jesus. God Almighty Jesus, help me. Help me, Lord. Help me, God. Help me finish this, Lord Jesus. Watch. Everything that's in hell right now was forewarned to us. Revelations 21 and 8 says, All liars, fornicators, adulterers, whoremongers, shall have their place in the burning fire. You've said here, you've said here for 50 minutes now, close to, and you've listened to this old preacher preach about a literal, eternal hell. What would be there? Who's going to be there? Who's already there? And you've stayed tuned till now. Some have already turned it off. Some have already called their family, made their remarks, and I pray for them. Others of you have decided to stay this long with me. You have now entered into the best part of this message. Because the best part of this message is simply, while hell is real, you don't have to go there. There has been a way made. There has been an escape route given for whosoever will to come and to call upon the name of Jesus. Goodness gracious. He that will, let him come. Whosoever will, let him come. Whosoever will that wants to walk away from that sin-filled, sin-natured life. And once their escape route from hell can come to Christ and he will forgive them. I didn't say anything in that word where it says belong to a certain church. I didn't say anything about coming out of that word where it says anything you have to sign a book. But there is a book that your name will enter if you ask Christ to be the Savior of your life and you walk away from this world and put your trust in the word of God and you begin to live just exactly the way the word of God says to the best of your knowledge. Goodness gracious. Then you don't have to go. You don't have to be there. You don't have to experience. You've experienced all the hell you will ever experience in your mind from what I've preached to you. Many men could preach it a whole lot better. They could paint you a better picture with their words. But I've done the best that I can today. But I give you this hope. 
if you'll just call on the name of Jesus and you will live for him. You will crucify your flesh and you will walk away from the desires and the lust of this world. Because they still, for every preacher that preached a word but spent more time down at the Dewdrop Inn and is basking in a lake of fire right now, for every one of them, there are preachers who walked away from the lust of the world and preached Jesus to a lost and dying generation. And when the last breath left their body, they stood before the council seat of God and their names were found in the book of life. And they entered in to that home with God forever. For every politician that was a crook, there's, there's one somewhere living for God. I'm a preaching. I'm a preaching better than I'm getting amen. For every, for every crooked doctor, there's, there's some that are good. Somebody, for every athlete that's a crook, huh? a, a, a womanizer, a drug addict. I wish somebody would help me preach. There's somebody out there that don't want the limelight, don't want all that. Huh? Somebody say man. Don't, don't want, don't want, j just realizes there's nothing more than a sinner saved but grace. God help us. I dare somebody raise your hand and say, God help us. Lord Jesus, help us, Father. There's a heaven to gain. There is a heaven to gain. I've got coal miners in here. There's a whole lot of nasty, filthy mouthed drunks digging their way. And could could walk in for the last time and never come out. But for every one of them rotten rascals, there's another one that's full of Jesus. <laughs> Somebody say amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. While hell is enlarging its borders, God already has a number. It's a, it's a number no man can number, but God's got a number. Sure, I wish somebody slip up your hands and praise God. God's got a number. I tell you, as much as I, as much as I wanted to spend more time, I would love to spend another hour. If I could keep your attention, maybe I, maybe I'll preach up one of these nights about uh, about heaven. Uh, maybe I'll preach that too. But 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 I believe with all of my heart, God wanted me to preach about hell because most people have no no thought process. Somebody say, man, most people think of heaven, they think of it as a place of peace and kindness and mercy. And, and a place of uh, no more sorrow, no more day. And we get that picture. But really and truly, I could never paint the picture of, uh, of heaven because I hath not seen nor ear has ever heard. Somebody say amen. But everything that's about hell is written in the book. It's in the word of God. Somebody raise your hands. It's in the word of God. It, it, it says in the word of God it would be a place where there would be gnashing of teeth. It would be a place where the worm dieth not. Somebody say man. It would be a place of eternal damnation. Eternal sorrow. Eternal. But there's a way to escape. And his name is Jesus. While well, the heads are bowed and eyes are closed in this building, those of you that are watching by the way of television, I don't care where you're at.
I don't care if you're in the living room. I don't care if you're driving down the road. I don't care. I don't, if you're driving down the road, you find a place to pull over. I don't care if you're in your living room, your bedroom, your kitchen. I don't care. I don't care if you're down the hall in a hospital room. I don't care if you're in a motel room. And if you're in a prison, I don't care where you may be. There's a way right now as you hear this brother preach to escape that eternal damnable place. there's anyone in this building today anyone in this building today that needs to make sure or make things right this altar is open those of you that are watching all you have to do is call on the name of Jesus that's all you have to do call on his name ask him to forgive you of your sins Ask him to wash you clean, and he will. He will. He will. That's all you got to do is ask him. That that you're feeling, sir. That's 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 not a feeling like you've ever felt before. A, a Budweiser can't do that for you. A stick of marijuana can't do this for you. That's the anointing. That's, that's the convicting power of the Holy Ghost that's fallen upon you. Bow your heads and ask Jesus to set you free. Ask him into your life. In the name of Jesus. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. Preachers, quit spending your time trying to find some deep, dark revelation to make you look like the smartest in the region the smartest on your on your board of elders so that the next camp meeting you get picked to preach and preach hell preach hell tell the world tell your families tell your neighbors that there's a place they don't want to be a part of Preach the truth. Preach the truth. Preach the truth. Hell is real. Hands raised all over this building. In the name of Jesus, hands raised all over this building. Hell is real. In the name of 